Hi guys, my name's John Watts and you've joined me at the True Golf Academy at Drayton Park Golf Club. Today we're going to be talking about punch shots, so a low ball flight uh, that we're possibly needing to be hitting either under low tree branches if we've hit it into trouble or in windy, windy conditions. So we're in the UK, it's uh, early February and uh, we've gone through probably one of the windiest winters. I think everybody's talked about it being one of the wettest and the warmest, but maybe it's also been the windiest winter. So it's, uh, it's a time where if you can control your ball flight, hit that ball that little bit lower, so it's not affected by the wind, you're gonna gain a lot more control over your golf ball and that's gonna to lead to lower scores. So I'm just gonna talk you through a few ways that you could lower your ball flight. Now, there is one quite obvious thing you could do and that is changing the club. Um, so uh, if I'm trying to hit at a seven iron um, distance, I could be taking more of a six or a five iron uh, to actually lower that ball flight and making a shorter swing. The issue um, that a lot of golfers have with that is controlling their backswing length and therefore the distance the ball is going to travel. If it's something you've practiced, if it's something you do practice regularly, then fine, you may well be able to use that method. What I'm going to talk to you about today is more keeping the same club, but lowering the ball flight um, through setup changes. So. Uh, we want to lower the launch angle, but we also want to lower the amount of backspin that we're creating. And uh, we're going to talk about, as I said, a few ways of, of doing that. The first thing to do is actually producing uh, a little less speed. Um, so the couple of things we're going to do at setup is going to help that. But if I take a little bit of a speed off it, uh, I am going to produce less backspin. Yes, it is going to mean the ball is going to be landing a little bit shorter where I'd expect, but because we're hitting it lower, because we're hitting that punch shot, I'm actually going to get more run on it. So the total distance is going to be pretty close to what we'd expect to get from a standard 7-iron. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do first of all is just go ahead and hit a regular one. So we've got some data uh, from my GC2 launch monitor in terms of the amount of uh, the launch angle and the amount of backspin that I'm generating. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and hit a, a pretty stock 7 iron. Okay, a little bit out the bottom of the golf club. Um, I might expect the launch angle just being a fraction lower, but it, it didn't look too bad. Uh, it was pretty straight at least. So it launched at 18 degrees and the backspin rate was just under uh, 6,000 revolutions. So it was 5,800 revolutions of backspin per minute and it was launching at just over 18 degrees. So that's a pretty standard seven iron for me, actually. It felt a little bit out of the bottom of the club, but um, actually the performance was okay and it was pretty close to being on target. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep that one. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about how I can then lower it, as I said, by keeping the same club rather than changing golf clubs. Uh, so the first thing we already talked about, and that's actually taking a little bit of speed out of it, that's going to produce less backspin, so not hitting it full out. Yes, less carry distance, but more roll, so the total distance is going to be somewhat similar. Uh, the best way to work out your yardages is on systems like this with the GC2 launch monitor or flight scope or track man and try and get some data and get some numbers. If you haven't got uh, the ability to get on these systems, then at least out on the practice area and pacing out some, some yardages. Yes, use the driving range, but do check their distances if you can. Um, sometimes their false distances up there take into, into account the golf balls that they're using, but I would try and do something where you can actually pace it out and measure it yourself. Uh, so the, the couple of things we're going to do, the first thing is just going to be to move my ball position a little bit back. So for a stock 7 iron, I'd have the ball quite central in my stance underneath my sternum. What I'm actually going to go ahead and do is just move a little bit forwards towards the target. So the ball is actually moving towards my trail foot. So as a right-handed player, my right foot. What I want to maintain, however, is my handle position. So although the ball position is changing, my handle position hasn't. I'm a firm believer that my handle position 
really for all shots bar bunker shots, lob shots, was actually going to stay in a constant position. So if I drop the end of the grip, it's going to rest on the right half of my left thigh. Okay, so my handle position has stayed the same, but my ball position has moved back. Effectively, what I'm therefore doing is de-lofting the golf club. So I'm turning a seven iron more into the angle of a six or five, depending on how far I move that ball back. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, is move that ball back, but keep my handle position the same. So I'm creating a little bit more shaft lean, de-lofting that golf club. The second thing I'm going to do is just apply a little bit more pressure onto my lead legs, onto my left foot. So I'm just going to, instead of starting with my weight at a 50-50 setup, I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit more pressure onto my left foot. Uh, now you can do that if you've got a force platform, fantastic. If not, maybe just a couple of sets of scales uh, of similar height where you can just see where your weight is. Uh, it's not quite the same thing. We're talking a little bit about pressure, but you would see that weight change as well as I apply a little bit more pressure into my lead foot, into my left leg. So I've moved the ball back. I've put a bit more pressure on my lead leg. And the last thing I'm actually going to do to lower that ball flight is I'm going to grip the club a little lower down the handle. So I'm going to move down so my right thumb is actually nearer uh, the top of the club shaft, the bottom of the grip. So I'm down the handle by a couple of inches. What that's going to do is mean that I'm tilting more over from my hips and that's going to get my shoulders working more up and down on a slightly more vertical axis. That means the club is traveling on a more downward path. Again, de-lofting it. Again, it's going to lower this launch angle and it's going to help me lower my back spin rate. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do one or two of those for you. Again, so I've moved the ball back, pressure a little bit more forwards. I've kept my handle position the same near my left thigh. And the last thing I've done is just grip down the handle. And that's meaning I'm tilting more from my hips. I don't want to try and sink down to it with my knees. So I'm tilting a little bit more forwards from my hips. So let's see the numbers on this one. I think you can see on the screen, I'll show you a close-up in, in just a minute, is a much lower ball flight, and the figures are just going to come up for me. Uh, so it launched at 13 degrees instead of 18 degrees. The back spin rate was 4,900 instead of 5,800. The ball carried a shorter distance, but it ran more on landing. So it actually finished something pretty similar um, around that 165 number, which is a pretty stock 7-iron for me. So, yes, it was a, a definitely lower launch, a lower spin. It landed a shorter distance, but actually rolled out to a pretty similar number. I'm just going to go ahead and hit one more and see if I can lower it even further for you. So, ball way back in my stance. Weight forwards, handle forwards, and I'm gripping down that golf club. So I've got an even lower ball flight there. I actually just uh, took a little bit of speed off it, so it's a slightly shorter backswing. Uh, I did manage to produce an even lower launch angle. So that one launched at 10.8 degrees, and the backspin rate actually was pretty similar to my last shot. It was about 5,000, so just under 1,000 revolutions less than my full shot. That's really going to help you control that ball flight in the wind. I hope that helps. If it does, please give us a thumbs up below and remember to subscribe to my channel for more info. Uh, it is free and uh, if you can post some comments as well about what videos you'd like to see, uh, hopefully I can get around to filming that content for you. Thanks guys.